cooking next is a chef whose skill with some of Britain's less fashionable ingredients helped him win a Michelin star for his restaurant in Edinburgh, Tom Kitchen. Uh, and on the menu for you, one that we've never had before right, on the okay. show. There you go. Right. right. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, this is... This is, <laughs> this is uh, what's the name of the dish, then, first? Right, no, so it's... Uh, Crispy ox tongue, but we have to braise the, uh, not ox tongue, lamb's tongue. We have yeah. to braise the lamb's tongue first. Right. And we're going to do a sweet bread fritter and a confit leek and some s nice uh, summer vegetables there. Lovely. Okay, all so right. we want to get these on to cook first okay. of all. Yeah. All right. So we're going, to, um, we're going to cook them for about two and a half hours, so they want yeah. to be really tender. Yeah. And the meat is really tender afterwards. It's, it's absolutely delicious. Now, this is on your lunch menu, then, is well, it? Well, yeah, I think, you know, like... You know, you have to make lunch menus affordable, right. and we try to do that at the restaurant, but of course you can't have a lobster and a, you know, turbot on your lunch menu, so these are the kind of ingredients that we use. Right. But I think people, you know, when they come to restaurants, they, they want to have something that they can't cook at home or might, you know, might not eat at home. And well, not, might not be able to get hold of, really. Aye. So these are, the, these are the little lamb's tongues which are going to go in, and like you said, they're slowly cooked, really, these ones. Yeah, you want to cook them nice and slowly and use up all the... You know, vegetables in the fridge, mirepoix. Yeah. But you should be able to get this down the farmer's market or pre-order it with a good butcher. Yeah. And do that. Well, they're bang in season now, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. There you go. Right, so the whole lot gets season. put together and you want me to then peel them, which is the best job of all, isn't it, really? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. They're in here somewhere. And these cook for how long? Oh, no. That was about two and a half hours. Yeah. And you could do that a couple of days in advance if you wanted. Yeah. But it does leave a lovely stock as well, so... You know, in Scotland, we don't waste and much. So, Don, you should have I'm eaten more Victoria Sponge, shouldn't you, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Don, you couldn't give us a wee hand, could you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Uh, right. So these things you just peel. Yeah. Right. Why do you peel it? Because it's got this, like, membrane on the outside. Yeah. Look. Look. It's a bit tough, off. the outside. Okay. My eyes yeah. are watering. I don't know if I'm promoting my restaurant here or not. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right. Okay. Yep. So I've got, next? I've got the sweet breads, okay, yeah. which is... The gland uh, next to the heart, which is again a bit off for me. <laughs> You're really I, I, selling this no, dish, aren't you? No, Tom? but I love this kind of stuff, you know, because yeah. it is the forgotten foods. And, you know, think people come to the restaurant yeah. and, you know, they taste it. And nine times out of ten, you do love it, but it's just mm. actually getting over the, the fear factor of, uh, of, of eating it. Well, I remember working in France and they have a lot of this. And I remember they used to um, pan fry theirs as well, right at the last minute. but. Uh -huh. Make a terrine out of the sort of uh, the tongue as well. So. so we want to get these really crispy. And these ones are a lot more affordable. The the veal sweetbreads is a real chefy ingredient. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. I'm sure you love those, Daniel. Yeah, I do. Right? I love them. Yeah. yeah, but that's about eight times the price of these. Right. So we don't use those on the lunch menu. But you're uh, you're you're well. You're not appearing together, but you're doing this. Th what is it? This cube. What is it? What is this about? Yeah, it's in uh, London. Tell us about yeah, this. Yeah, we're thing. both. Uh, we're both part of the uh, a cu the cube, which is going to be a, it's going to be a glass box on top of the the Royal Festival Hall. Right. And uh, different chefs. How many? Five of us. Five of us. We'll be cooking at different intervals throughout the the summer. Right. And it was you know it was a chance to come down and showcase okay. Scotland and you know showcase, showcase what we do really. Yeah. yeah. So it, it was it was a great opportunity, and I'm really looking forward to it. So what is it? A five course meal, or what? 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 Can people book there and stuff, or what? Yeah, you can book online if you go to uh, right. the Cube, and it's in the Royal Festival Hall, and you can come and temp taste the food that uh, you know the chefs are cooking. And it should be, it's got amazing time. views of London, hasn't it? Unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, we we did the opening night on Thursday, and it's just uh, it's it's exceptional. The view is beautiful, the setup is beautiful, and it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, yeah. Well done, James. This, I get the best job, you see. Look at that. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> put some, um, <laughs> right. some shallots and parsley and yep. some garlic in there. And we've got them lovely and crispy. Okay, and then we've got a bit of lamb stock. Now, the leek itself, that. you want to roast up in just tin foil, yeah? Yeah, we're going to put that in the tin foil and comp it in the oven. Right. Which is a great way of cooking um, because all the flavour of the leek will stay. It's not going to escape anywhere, okay? So that's a whole leek, salt and pepper. Yep. And a little bit of oil then, I take it. Yeah, that's right. So this is where maybe it gets a little bit more complicated if you want to try. We're going to stick the sweet bread with the lovely lamb stuff sauce in there. Right. Into an, an ice cube uh, container. Okay, you following me? Uh, yes, kind of, yeah. <laughs> this goes in the oven for... 
That's going to take about minutes? 25 minutes. Okay. And this goes in the freezer. And we freeze those. Because what we want to do now is roll them in the breadcrumbs. Right. Oh, okay. the, so you flour egg and breadcrumb them? Flour egg and breadcrumbs. Right. Yeah. So they're like little fritters. Exactly. So when you cut into it, they're going to kind of like ooze out. Right. Okay, so we've got our flour. Yeah, and as well as all this and the cube and bits and pieces, you're, you, you've got a new book coming out of you this, uh, later on this year? Yeah, in uh, late August, September. Right. Kitchen suppers, so, you right. know, with my aptly named <laughs> name. You can imagine when I was at school and uh, I said I was going to do home economics <laughs> by a name like Kitchen. Anyway, yeah, so that's coming out. That's really exciting. And all right. home recipes as well. Right. And there's right. no lamb tongues in there. There's no, no lamb tongue nah. in it. So is this a dish that you're going to cook at the cube or is this...? Uh, no, this one's not on the menu, but this is the kind of dish that you would yeah. get on the lunch menu at the restaurant. Yeah. I'll save it for the Good Food Show because you're there, aren't you? With, with us, we're yeah. on stage. Yeah, God, I can't wait for that. Yeah. Brilliant, yeah. In the summer Good Food Show, which is this month. Yeah, in Birmingham. Right, so we've got... So we're going to roll those in the flour first. Yeah. So this is a great way, you know, to do any... You know, if you do egg breadcrumbs at home, Don, you just mm -hmm. put them in flour first. And then egg wash. Yeah, normally do people will do pieces of chicken, not sweetbreads, don't they? Um. <laughs> yeah, but we're pushing the boundaries a wee bit here. Right. So this is a raw salad on the top. We've got radishes, shallots, yeah. carrots, and you want the broad beans as well. I love raw vegetable salad because it gives lovely texture as well to. Mm. Why are sweetbreads so expensive? Because there's not many Stupid of them. Stupid question. Because there's not a lot of them. Oh, I suppose. Yeah. And uh, I don't know really. I suppose that's the yeah, for me. That's uh, why are they so expensive, Tom? But so Got no idea. Yeah. Tom, why are they so expensive? <laughs> That's a stitch up, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've right, no so idea. I just panny these and right. I've got a couple of... These are frozen just now, so I just want some that are uh, defrosted. Right. So you have to plan ahead a little bit with this dish if you... Is it the gelatine in the stock that keeps them together, Tom? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because they're frozen. Then we're just going to pop those in the fryer so they're nice and crispy. Okay. Right, we've got the broad beans here. Made a bit of a mess, but never mind. That's right. And then you've got the lamb's tongue. We've got about a minute left. Okay, so then there you go. down with uh, the Now, of course, all of today's studio recipes, including this one from Tom, are on our website. Go to bbc.co.uk forward slash Saturday Kitchen. And don't forget, I'll be sharing some of my favourite recipes from the Saturday Kitchen archives. Another Best Bites programme tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock over on BBC Two. Right. Okay, got that. The leak, I'm doing that, Chef. Can we go get the leak? Quickly, James, quickly. <laughs> huh? <laughs> right. right. Look at that. It's lovely. So you see all that lovely juice in there. We'll keep that. We'll put that over the top because that's that's real flavour. That is. Now grabriche is normally served with uh, a lot of offal, isn't it? This, yeah. This so capers, got... gherkins. And it's like one of the classic dishes that you know you don't see on too many menus. But no people like me who love classical cooking, I keep going with the old sauce grabriche, and it's good because it cuts through the. Uh, the richness of the dish. Yeah. It's another one that you can make up in advance, isn't it? And it's just yeah, it's lovely. Even with just like a platter of cold meats, it's beautiful. Yeah, exactly. So okay, so we got a plate. So chopped eggs, capers, gherkins, parsley, and mayonnaise. Yeah. Right. Okay. Done. Yeah. Look at that. Mayonnaise in. And you can see the sweetbreads are lovely and crispy now. Mix that. Salt, pepper. Come on, chef. I'm on it, chef. I'm you're there. You're doing well. You're doing well. You That's it. Put the grubish down the middle. Veggies ready when you are. Thank you. We've got a crispy uh, lamb's tongue. Nice wee fritter. And then we can put some of the nice raw vegetables. Which are lovely and fresh, give a real peel broad beans, you don't like that, do you? I <laughs> life's too short to double pot a broad bean. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. And there we have it. Happy with that? Okay. So stick it out the front. Okay, so there we've got our um confit leek with sauce grubish, crispy lamb's tongue. Sweetbread fritter and some nice uh, raw vegetables on top. We got there in the end. <laughs> <laughs>
Tom, with your inventive take on leeks and lamb, you could serve a rich white wine. But because of the vegetables, the herbs and the meatiness of this dish, I'm going to go with the red instead. Now, I did consider this Spanish garnacha salvaje de Moncayo. But instead of a Grenache, I've chosen a Syrah from the other side of the Pyrenees in the Languedoc of southern France. The one I've picked is the 2009 de Les Yeux Syrah. Some wines really smell and taste of the place they come from, and that's the case here. The hills of the Languedoc are full of wild thyme, lavender and rosemary, and it really comes through in the wine. On the nose, this is aromatic and spicy, with notes of aniseed, lovely succulent red and black fruits. On the palate, the wine is rich enough to stand up to the lamb's tongues, the fritters and the graviche. There's a slight impression of sweetness here, which goes really nicely with the leeks. The spiciness in the wine picks up on the pepper, the garlic and the thyme. Tom, I love the combination of flavours in your recipe, and I think I've found just the perfect wine to match. Hope you agree.